the UFC 292 experience. What's up guys, Bryce from Boston. I wanna talk about my experience at UFC 292 in Boston, Massachusetts at TD Garden. Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley and Zhang Wei Li versus Amanda Lemos. Now this was an unbelievable experience for me. The whole fight week, I wanna talk about the entire fight week. This is a video that I wanted to make because I attended the event and that was super cool. This is my second ever UFC event. So it's always an awesome experience to be able to go to one of these. And um, I'm a gigantic UFC fan. So to just so to just be there and see it in front of you and see it in person, it's always weird. Um, now that I've done it twice, it was weird the first time. It's weird the second time. It's just really weird overall because it's so cool, but it also kind of feels like you're dreaming a bit. And I know if you've ever, um, you guys can comment, if you've ever been to a UFC event, you'll probably agree. Um, if you're a hardcore fan, obviously, if you don't care, it won't be that, you know, special. It'll just be like you're at like some random concert or something. But if you're a gigantic UFC fan, you know what it's like when you go to, you know, I feel like probably the early events too, you like your first few that you go to. This one stands out for me, not only because it's in Boston, but because of just the whole vibe around the week. And obviously it concluding with Sugar Sean O'Malley becoming the new UFC Bantamweight champion. I'm a big O'Malley fan. So seeing him accomplish that in person it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my entire life. It was one of the most fun experiences, one of the most fun fight weeks. My voice is still a bit messed up from last night. This is I'm recording this the day after. Screaming so much, which is something I don't do. I don't scream, but I wanted the crowd to be good. I wanted the crowd to be lively. I want UFC to come back to Boston, obviously. So I want to talk about this fight week. I attended the UFC press conference on Thursday, which was super cool. Press conferences are always really fun to watch, and I feel like this was... A pretty decent press conference as well. I actually didn't know these were free. So when I went to UFC 281 in New York, which is the Alex Pereira versus Izzy card, I actually didn't go to this. I don't know if I would have had time anyway because we were doing some other stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it was free, so it was super cool. I went with Guille, who is a part of my hot takes videos, part of our hot takes videos, which are you know some of my favorite videos. It was cool to be there with him. We also went to the uh, ceremonial weigh-ins on Friday, the same thing. Um, my brother came to that and that was super fun as well. Those are so good at getting you hyped up for the event. I feel like the press conference was pretty good. I feel like the ceremonial weigh-ins were pretty good. They got me hyped. It was even cool. They had a Q&A before and Chael Sonnen was there and stuff. Uh, Rob Font, Calvin Cater, which are two fighters we obviously wish we had on the card. I wish there was more New England fighters on the overall card, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because we had our particular fan favorites which are Ian Gary and Sean O'Malley overall on the card. Those were our favorites. And I want to talk about Ian Gary a bit too, because he's a controversial subject right now in the MMA fan base. So obviously when you get like a guy who UFC is definitely trying to promote as a star, he definitely walks around with that confidence of a star. People are going to criticize him. People are not going to like him. I understand it. Not everyone has to like everyone. I know that, you know, people are different. Some people, you know, just don't like people and that is what it is. But I think commenting hate towards Ian Gary because of particular things that he does is also a bit stupid. Like, if you don't like him, just don't like him and don't say anything about it, you know what I mean? But commenting only promotes his star power even more. So he's been getting a lot of hate comments recently, not only with the beef with Neil Magny and obviously the fight with Neil Magny. Ian Gary did a open workout at a pub on Friday night an Irish pub on Friday night when Saturday was the fights and stuff. I was able to meet Ian Gary, which was so cool. And now people were just saying cringes. I want to talk about this because Ian Gary on Wednesday, the media day, said he was going to be doing a public workout or something and like slash meet and greet kind of thing. I had low expectations. I thought maybe I'd be able to meet him, but it was super cool because uh, I didn't know what the experiences would be like. I'm not old enough to get into the pub. I'm only 19, but they said that till 10 o'clock, we'd be able to go there. So me and my friend, we went and we were fortunate enough to meet Ian Gary. Not everyone there met him, but he seemed like so cool, like genuinely so cool, so confident. To be able to do something like that, I think for the fans, I know, I understand how you can perceive it as cringe, but I, I don't at all. I think it was just one of the coolest things you can do for your fans. You got so much criticism called cringe for it. I think it's cringe to call that cringe. I think that makes no sense if you criticize that. I thought it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen anyone do ever. Like that, just to do that for the fans, people were so excited outside. We were sitting outside waiting for the workout to end. He came back out. So he's working out, you know, he's 
hitting, hitting the pads inside or whatever. He First off, he greeted the fans before going in. Then he comes back out, talks to the fans again, takes pictures with many of us, t tells us to get in a line and stuff. It was hectic and chaotic, but he also made sure that, you know, he would take pictures with people and he'd give the fans, you know, something to remember, especially for that experience. And not every fighter does that, trust me. Like, no one else did that on the card, I'm pretty sure. Do like a meet and greet and things like that. And I know people are just going to criticize and say, yeah, that's just his ego. But I don't mind an ego. It's fighting. We need to stop hating fighters who have confidence. There's a difference between confidence and like extreme, annoying, cocky, cockiness where it's just blatant disrespect. I don't think Ian Gary is that. I think he's just a confident guy. It was dope to meet him. Super cool dude. Like, I thought that was a super cool thing overall. That was one of my favorite experiences of the week. I got to meet Tatiana Suarez as well, who did a meet and greet. And yeah, they let us in there. I was not expecting to get in because it said age 21 or older. Wasn't able to go meet Calvin Cater because of that. That was on Saturday fight day, so it would have been a more hectic day anyway. But obviously the fight day was just crazy. Overall, just a vibe. Like if you, if you have a UFC event, no matter where you live, um, your home or whatever, like if you have a UFC event that's in your um, state, in your country, try to go. I'm telling you, try to go. I know it's expensive. If you can, try to go if you're a big UFC fan, because you won't regret it. Um, it's so fun, even if the fights aren't great. Like, the main card was not great. The prelims and early prelims were phenomenal on this card. The main card wasn't really delivering for the most part, um, in, at least in my opinion. I liked the fights, and I wasn't ungrateful about it, but it. I always kind of think about it like the fights don't matter that much, like or the name value on the card even that much. It's not the be-all, end-all about the event. It's the experience, the vibe, obviously who, who goes with you and stuff. It's super cool to go with friends or family. And um, yeah, the experience was great. Just having it in Boston was even more cool because when I was in New York, it, it's cool that it's like in New York and stuff. I've never been to New York and you know, it's hype and it's MSG and stuff, but like to have it in your home where you're from, it's awesome. So I, I, it just felt so cool because the fighters would acknowledge Boston. And um, that's dope. That's always dope. Um, uh, great performances on the card as well. Bracketona versus Cody Gibson stands out to me. That was an unbelievable fight in person as well. Natalia Silva with an amazing performance against Andrea Lee. Cheeto Vera with a big win over Pedro Munoz. The Chris Weidman versus Brad, Brad Tavares fight. Probably one of those fights that's more fun in person than it was on TV. Ian Gary defeating Neil Magny was another one. Gregory Rodriguez, what he did to Dennis Tolulin. You know, Ian Gary had a great performance against Magny as well. Zhang Wei Li in her performance against Amanda Lemos was crazy it wasn't the you know most entertaining fight but it was a great performance from Wei Li, a historic performance the strike differential was crazy and then the main event Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley was the loudest crowd I've ever heard I was there when Alex Pereira knocked out Adesanya in the fifth round that was more shock this was insane I know the crowd was more you know on Adesanya's side in New York but seeing O'Malley all fight week O'Malley everyone had the afros on everyone had the sugar jerseys on everyone had the sugar hats and everyone had the sugar shirts and the everyone it was crazy, uh, the environment and stuff. I didn't think, I didn't expect it to be like that. Like New York, I expected to see more fighters around and stuff. Like you know, in Boston, I didn't really expect it. I saw Buffer walking around, got a picture with Bruce Buffer, which is awesome. Sean O'Malley's brother, which is su he's super cool, dude. Yeah, it was just cool. There was fighters around. It was, a, you know, unbelievable vibes. A lot of Irish people in the crowd as well from Ireland, which was kind of cool. Yeah, the, everyone was so hyped to see Sean O'Malley knock out Aljamain Sterling. I was hyped, but also a bit surprised, especially at the way that it happened. I knew he had the power to finish him. I said I was 60-40 Aljo. I did end up picking Aljo. I knew when I posted my predictions, I, I had a bit of regret, but I'm not going to act like that was, you know, a, a bad pick or anything. Like, I picked Aljamain Sterling. I thought he was going to win. Sean O'Malley getting that knockout saved kind of like the main card from being, you know, a, a decent main card, which I was not ungrateful about. I'm very grateful for the experience. And I'm even more grateful, though, because how great it was in the end. Sean O'Malley finishes Aljamain Sterling. Um, it was a great performance. It was a, you know, short fight. Didn't last long, like 50 seconds into the second round. He was able to land that clean step back, smack step back, right hand on Aljamain Sterling. It was a very nice finish. Everyone's talking about how well-timed it was. In person, it was really weird. I felt like it was the latest stoppage ever because I was looking at the fight and I was, when I saw Aljo fall, I did think he got knocked out cold for some reason, for a split second. I think a lot of people did by the way he fell kind of face first. And O'Malley was landing big shots and I was like, stop it, stop it. Everyone's already jumping around just celebrating anyway. Everyone was jumping around. At least where I was, like high up in the crowd, but you know, constant shots on Aljo. Everyone, 
people are complaining about the stoppage and stuff. It's just kind of funny how in person I thought it was like a very late stoppage. But when I watch it back, I do understand it a lot more. I don't think it's early though. I think it's just a good stoppage. But Sean O'Malley gets the win over Aljo and really just makes that event even more iconic, obviously, and makes that experience even more better because I did want him to win. And I wanted Ian Gary to get the win. Uh, I wanted Zhang Wei Li to get the win. A lot of fighters. I actually did good on my predictions. Went ten and ten and two, so I got ten out of twelve correct. Um, but I didn't even care about the predictions. It was just about the experience, the fun. Go to a UFC event. It's super fun. Thank you to all the fighters on the card. Thank you to Dana White for coming back to Boston, man. We've been waiting for a long time for a Boston event. Um, it came out of nowhere. Like I, I thought it'd be a fight night. I was thinking about it this year, and I was thinking it'd be a fight night, but. It kind of got cemented when Aljo defeated Henry Cejudo that, you know, it might be O'Malley in Boston next. And I'm so happy it happened. This was the UFC 292 experience. Comment what your experience was like at a UFC event. Comment what you think about UFC 292 and Sean O'Malley's insane win over Aljamain Sterling. is just crazy. And um, thanks for watching this video. <laughs>